Good afternoon, everyone, and we want to thank you for attending the CREATE Programs Get On Board Railroad Opportunities panel this afternoon. Uh, we had a great uh, panel this morning, uh, a great overview of the program, uh, and some uh, words from um, Representative uh, Bobby Rush earlier this morning. Um, and again, we want to thank you for attending. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, just as a few for a few housekeeping measures, um, each of the sessions for Get On Board, including this one, uh, will be recorded and shared online after the event. So if you do miss any piece of this or any one of the other sessions, they will be uh, online, they'll be recorded, be placed online, so you'll be able to go back and view these uh, both on the project websites and on the, um, project, the program's YouTube channel. Um, we ask that, uh, you know, anyone who's not speaking, please stay muted with your camera off, off unless you are speaking. Um, to submit any questions um, during the event, please use the Q&A feature, which is at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can type in any questions there, and all questions will be answered at the Q&A session at the end. Uh, do not be concerned if we don't get to your question at the end. We will be producing an FAQs, a Frequently Asked Questions document, um, following the last session of Get On Board, and that will also be posted and sent out just so we can make sure that um, even if we don't get to your question right now, it's something that will be addressed. Um, and they'll, we'll also share a few other ways um, to uh, move uh, to have any of your questions addressed. Next slide. So, um, you know, again, right now we're in the Railroad Opportunities Panel, which will be uh, held from two to four today. Uh, tomorrow morning, from 10 to 11.30 a.m., we will have a similar panel with the public agencies, um, CDOT, the city of Chicago, Cook County, the Illinois Department of Transportation, and METRA. Tomorrow afternoon from 2 to 3 p.m., we will have um, an event for uh, insider perspective of working on CREATE. So you'll have the opportunity to hear from current DBEs um, who are working on the CREATE program uh, and their experience, ranging from those who've been on for a couple of months to those who've been working on it for a few years now. Um, then starting Wednesday, we will have a business presentation session. Uh, during that, there will be um, a series of businesses, um, some currently working, others uh, prospectively working with the CREATE program, um, who will be uh, like introducing their businesses uh, and we'll have a Q&A session um, for anyone who will be attending. Tomorrow afternoon from 2 to 3.30 p.m., uh, we will have a second opportunity for five businesses um, that you may want to look to partner with uh, or uh, look to partner with each other. Um, we'll be presenting uh, their businesses from 2 to 3 p.m., and prior to that, we'll have remarks from uh, Congresswoman Marie Newman. And then Thursday, we will have the final set of business presentations, um, and following that presentation, we will have some closing remarks from one of the CREATE partners. Um, and with that, I will turn it actually over to Bill Thompson to introduce Representative Garcia. Great. Thank you, Keith. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bill Thompson. I am the chief engineer of the Association of American Railroads. I want to thank all of you, and it looks like we have over 100 participants, for participating and joining us in this Railroad Opportunities pan Panel sponsored by the CREATE Partners. The goal of this panel is to offer potential suppliers and contractors that are new to working with the railroads with an understanding of how to access and compete for procurement opportunities with the railroads in the Chicago area. But before we get to the railroad specifics, the CREATE partners are happy to have United States Representative Congressman Jesus Chuy Garcia joining us today. Congressman Garcia represents the 4th Congressional District of Illinois Throughout his career, Congressman Garcia has been a progressive voice, both as an organizer and as a legislator, fighting to improve the lives of his working class neighbors, many of whom are immigrants like him. Representative Garcia as a member, is a member of the Financial Services Committee, serves on the National Natural Resources Committee, and on the Transportation Infrastructure Committees in Congress. He's a member of the several congressional caucuses, including the Hispanic Caucus. Representative Garcia is the founder of the Tran Future of Transportation Caucus. Representative Garcia served as a member of the Chicago City Council, served as a Cook County Commissioner, 
and served in the Illinois Senate. Representative Garcia was born in Los Pinos, a small village in the Mexican state of Durango. He came to the United States with his family in 1965 with permanent resident status. Representative Garcia earned a bachelor's degree in political science and a master's in urban planning from the University of Illinois, Chicago. Congressman Garcia and his wife, Evelyn, live in Chicago's Little Village neighborhood. And they have three adult children and six grandchildren. Congressman Garcia, welcome. We thank you for being with us today. Uh, good afternoon and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. And uh, thank you, uh, Bill Thompson for the introduction. Uh, I have enjoyed working with the American Association, uh, uh, Association of American Railroads and I'm excited to see what else we can partner on in the future. And thank you to CREATE for inviting me to speak. Uh, CREATE has been blazing the trail as the first partnership between the US uh, Department of Transportation, the state of Illinois, Cook County, city of Chicago, Metro, Amtrak, and the nation's largest uh, freight railroads demonstrating what can be accomplished when the right players come together to work in partnership. I represent Chicago's fourth congressional district. And as I'm sure you all know, Chicago has the busiest freight rail hub in the country with almost 500 freight trains and 750 passenger trains passing through my city each day, just a block away from my house. Chicagoans are well aware of the importance of freight rail uh, to not just our city's economy, but to the country as a whole. That's why this year is such an a critical moment for Chicago and our surface transportation partners, especially freight. With the new Congress, a new DOT and major legislative vehicles like the American Jobs Act moving forward, we have a huge chance to advance key priorities for Chicago and the region. I'm pushing for a fix it first focus. Our country needs to have a fix it first mentality before putting money into new projects. We need to fix our current infrastructure and give operation and maintenance dedicated streams of funding so cities aren't left to foot the bill once projects are complete. Fix it not only saves money and time, but is also a smart climate decision. I'm also working to move the transportation sustainability conversation beyond electric vehicles. EVs are great. And for those individuals who can afford them, have access to charging and have a commute that allows them to drive and park at work, they're a great solution. But for those who can't afford them, we need other solutions. The focus on EVs also fails to acknowledge the fact that freight rail is the greenest form of commercial transportation throughout the country. We must ensure that freight rail will be our means, our main means of commercial transportation going forward, not only for the massive environmental benefits, but for the congestion benefits as well. The reality is I see, uh, honestly, uh, transportation policy as a matter of racial and economic justice. And for too long, we haven't acknowledged it as the social justice matter that it is. We have some really great opportunities ahead of us to start rewriting the future of our built environment and projects like CREATE truly exemplify the best and the best in terms of the kind of innovation and energy that we can achieve when we work together and think outside the box. That means thinking about reconnecting neighborhoods, creating dedicated funds for great separations, advancing safety technology, and paving the way for more sustainable practices. Right now, we're in the midst of our FY22 appropriations process, which has brought earmarks now known as community project funding back. Congress is also working on not one, but two major infrastructure bills. The Surface Transportation Reauthorization, which is a bill we do every five years, and 
President Biden's two trillion American jobs plan, where a majority of the money will go to transportation and infrastructure projects. These investments present a once in a century opportunity. For too long, we've been slapping band-aids on our infrastructure problems without making the investments that we need to solve them. But I know that we can upgrade our infrastructure and we can build our rail system back better. Thank you again to CREATE for inviting me to participate and speak. And of course, I look forward to learning more from the panel on how rail is working with disadvantaged business enterprises. Thank you so much. Bill? Congressman Garcia, thank you so much. It was great to see you again, and we really appreciate your interest and your attendance this afternoon. We thank wholeheartedly you. thank you for your ongoing support of the CREATE program and also for your great work on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, which we know is so important to the transportation future of this country and to help keep the CREATE program moving forward. The Chicago Regional Environmental and Transportation Efficiency Program is a pro program focused on improving highways and railroad flows in and around Chicago. You heard about CREATE earlier today. This session is sponsored by the CREATE partners but the session is on more general railroad opportunities in the Chicago area. And it's designed as all these sessions are, as you heard this morning, if you participated, but again, I'll repeat it, to take the mystery out of how to do business with either the crate partners, the railroads, the state, the city, the county, all the other sessions will focus on this issue and will be presented by the other crate partners. In the morning, we'll have the agencies presenting tomorrow morning on Tuesday morning. So to start the railroad session off, I would first like to introduce our first speaker, Jacqueline Donaldson Gray of Amtrak. Jacqueline. Good afternoon all. Um, certainly to Congressman Garcia, the CREATE team and partners, um, and all the distinguished um, panelist speakers and attendees. Um, I am so grateful to be here and to participate in this opportunity. Um, I am the head of the Supplier Diversity Office for Amtrak, and I am located in the Washington, D.C. office, as well as Philadelphia's um, Corporate Procurement Office. Our Supplier Diversity mission statement is to establish, monitor, and document the procurement procedures required for the Supplier Diversity Program in support of Amtrak's efforts to ensure dis dis non-discrimination in the award and administration of contracts, create a level playing field on fir um, diverse firms so that they can compete fairly, help remove barriers to the participation of diverse firms on contracts, and assist with the development of diverse firms that can compete successfully in the marketplace and achieve at a minimum Amtrak's corporate goal of 10% of total expenditures. Expenditures. What goes into that 10% is actually our direct spend. Um, any of the purchase orders that we send directly to diverse firms, as well as our tier two and subcontract opportunities. That would also include um, P cart purchases, procurement cart purchases, as well as fuel management purchases as well. Next, please. What I have for you here um, is some important information that helps you to do business with Amtrak. Um, up at the top, you will find the link to the procurement portal. Um, you will find an email address that goes directly to the Supply Diversity Office, as well as the procurement email that you can ask questions. The next link that you see is actually a guide sheet to how to do business in its entirety. So it's going to give you prompts and um, tips to navigate our procurement portal. It will tell you where the opportunities are. It will also give you access to the procurement directory of all of the agents by commodity, um, as well as whether a uh, wonderful pertinent procurement information that's available to you. So our, our, our portal is actually the gateway to um, pertinent procurement information, which will include our office. Um, this link allows you to view, again, most of the solicitations, typically $250,000 or more in the estimated value will be posted on this portal. Um, you can also participate in the vendor registration. This registration does create a profile for the diverse vendors that will be available in a directory 
that is inward and outward facing. The directory is one of the resources we utilize to assist in the identification of diverse firms for a bid participation. You do not have to be registered to participate in the bidding process. You can bid at any time. And we just ask that you peruse the entire portal as there is a lot of pertinent procurement information. Again, I thank you for the opportunity and I believe I'm turning it over to Chris Steinway of Belt Railway. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thanks. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, sign on and hear, uh, hear from the railroads and how you can uh, reach out to do business with us. Uh, a little bit of background about the belt. Uh, we're a little bit unique here today in that we are one of the uh, short line railroads that's uh, always uh, one of, been one of the create partners. We are located entirely within Cook County um, in Chicago's Clearing neighborhood and also in the village of Bedford Park, Illinois. Uh, we were founded in 1882 maintain approximately 450 employees and we are the largest intermediate switching terminal railroad in the US. So we are basically like a sorting facility for the class ones uh, getting their traffic east to west uh, here in Chicago. Uh, we have approximately 28 miles of uh, mainline railroad track, about 300 miles of switching yard track, and we run our operation 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. Um, in regards to our, um, our diversity contractor efforts, um, one thing I think you'll be pleased to know is that we actually have a considerably more direct process for reaching out. Um, uh, next slide, please. So uh, as a smaller railroad, obviously uh, the belt contracts out the full, uh, the full range of services and supplies that any of the other railroads do, um, including construction, um, material supplies, whether construction supplies or office supplies, um, asphalt road crossing replacement, uh, maintenance and janitorial services, vegetation and pest control, vehicle repair, electrical contracting, um, suppliers for both of our safety equipment and our employee recognition hats fleeces things like that uh, and crew transport um, our procurement process centers around our operating department heads so uh, who work in conjunction with uh, with my office to determine new contractors for new services so the uh, the easiest way to reach out to us is to uh, simply email the the, con the email that we have listed there in the slide, contractorinquiries at beltrailway.com. Uh, my office reviews those and then we will send them out to the appropriate uh, department that we think is most uh, most appropriate for uh, considering that new contractor. Um, and I would say that when you reach out, you know provide a little bit of information about yourself and your company, um, you know, any kind of informational materials or brochures that you can attach and specifically what sort of services or supplies you are interested in bidding out here at the belt. Uh, at that point, we'll review it, we'll have a look at it and we will forward on to the department that, you know, deals with that service the most frequently and, um, and then they can review and see uh, where you know, compare that against their current uh, their current bids and see um, if they would like to uh, get any further information from you. So that's that's our process in a nutshell. And I think at that point, that's all I've got. So uh, again, I thank you for your time. And now I'll be handing it over to Mr. Peter Scosi at the representing the BNSF. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Peter Scosi, Executive Director of State and uh, Government Affairs at BNSF Railroad. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us here this afternoon. Um, BNSF does believe in the power of diversity. We have a full-time Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer, Courtney Johnson. Uh, she's from the Chicago area, but relocating down to our headquarters in Fort Worth shortly. Um, and I also am pleased to state that we uh, we are now led by the first female CEO to run a class one railroad in US history, Katie Farmer, who just took over the reins um, this the beginning of this year. Next slide, please. Uh, you'll notice now as, as you hear from the other class ones, each of us have a relatively similar process for onboarding new suppliers. 
Um, I've included the entire web link at the top of this slide, but it's really quite simple to find. If you go to bnsf.com, at the top of the page, there's a suppliers drop down menu, and that will then reveal diverse business enterprise. Once you plug into that or click onto that link, you'll then be uh, at the page you see here that I took a snippet on and put on this slide. And there is a form there to fill out the um, pre-assessment form for diverse suppliers. It's essential that everyone who wants to do business with BNSF first fill out that form. In that form, it'll ask you a series of questions. What can you provide? Um, your diverse certification, um, so forth and so on, your, your size and whatnot. Um, and then after that, one of our representatives from Fort Worth and our procurement office will contact you and uh, have a discussion with you about potential um, opportunities within the railroad. You can see on the slide here too, we have a, a diverse uh, array of uh, products that we source from diverse owned suppliers, everything from construction services, relocation services, lodging, rail car lubricants, so forth and so on. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at the website, bnsf.com, find that link and get yourself registered on our database. Um, thank you very much. That's all I have today. I'm sorry, Bill, I'm not sure who I'm handing it off to next. No, thank you. Thank you very much. And while we're making this transition, let me just remind you again that you can go in and ask questions. If you miss something, the documents that are presented in front of you will be available and you can get copies of these documents but you also can ask a question and we'll do our best to answer those questions at the end of the session. So next, it'll be Stacy Lyons from CN. Good afternoon, I'm Stacy Lyons, CN's US Manager of Government and Public Affairs. I'm happy to speak with you all today. In business for more than 100 years, Canadian National Railway is a leading transportation and logistics company and the only transcontinental railway in North America. Our network spans from Canada through Mid-America, connecting to ports on the Atlantic, Pacific, Gulf of Mexico, and through communities large and small. We offer fully integrated rail and logistics services, including intermodal, trucking, marine shipping, freight forwarding, warehousing, and customs brokerage, servicing exporters, importers, farmers, retailers, manufacturers, manufacturers and transportation. Our transportation services are critical to modern life, touching the lives of millions of people every day. To note, Illinois is CN's largest U.S. state in terms of operations and employees. Our routes in North America converge in Chicago. Homewood is home to CN's U.S. headquarters and a, mo and a modern $14.5 million training center built in 2014. Further, CN has over 1,800 railroad employees and nearly 1,300 route miles in Illinois alone. Next slide, please. In 2018, CN's Procurement and Supply Chain Management Department spent $7.58 million with diverse owned suppliers. In 2019, that number was $7.15 million. But in 2020, CN's Procurement and Supply Management Department has grown that number to approximately $12.8 million with diverse owned suppliers. These numbers represent 16 suppliers that are tracked monthly and possess a certification of diversity. It is important to note that CN is in the process of implementing additional tools and processes to better identify and report diverse owned suppliers. CN is making efforts to identify, collect and collect data on diverse owned businesses and recently developed a platform system to assist in the process. To date, CN has successfully onboarded over 1,000 suppliers. The supplier information will be updated on a regular basis and reviewed to ensure accuracy and data, accuracy and data, and set meaningful targets. CN, like other railroads, have specialized purchasing requirements to maintain the highest safety standards consistent with federal regulations. CN makes purchasing decisions on a network basis as CN's network spans multiple states in the U.S. and provinces in Canada. Other areas of evaluation include, but are not limited to, safety performance, product and service quality, 
and technical capacity. CN awards contracts for goods and services to suppliers who provide the best overall value to CN in these areas while balancing quality, cost, and the service requirements. The work to create a diverse supplier and employee pool does not begin at the application portal. It must start with the youth of the communities we operate in and throughout. To that end, CN has established diversity as one of the pillars of our strong community fund, along with creating the next generation of railroaders. By supporting transportation education, CN is inspiring and helping today's youths become tomorrow's railroaders. CN understands that it all comes down to future economic growth, Today's young people will be tomorrow's leaders who will shape the success of our company in the years to come and will bolster the North American economy. I hope you learned something new today as it relates to how CN is supporting not only diverse suppliers, but the communities in which we operate. Please feel free to contact Vasilios Mandelos, who is CN's point of contact for diverse owned suppliers with additional questions or explore CN's su supplier portal online as an additional resource. Thank you for your time. I believe I'll be passing the presentation over to Ariel Giordano with CP. Ariel, you're still on mute. God, how many times have that has that happened? Thank you, Stacy. I am Arielle Giordano. I am Canadian Pacific's Director of Federal and State Government Affairs. I am responsible for all GA for us in the United States. Um, for us, diversity is really important at CP. Um, we are committed to increasing diversity and this includes striving to maintain and increase diversity at the board level through to our executives, senior management, employees, and suppliers. We understand that a diverse and inclusive network and work environment provides a broader range of experience and perspectives that in turn create a stronger and more successful railway. We support the principle of diversity um, for boardroom diversity. We have the first female chair of any class one railroad, railroad Isabel Corville, um, and we are committed to diversity through all levels of the company. Um, could you please move to the next slide? So CP is committed to a policy of non-discrimination in our purchase of goods and services throughout North America. It is our policy to offer equal opportunity to all capable vendors, regardless of race, religion, national origin, sex, age, or physical handicap. In the United States, CP recognizes the importance of the objectives of the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, DBE program, which provides an enhancement of opportunities for businesses, which at least 51% of the ownership and management are controlled by U.S. citizens from from one or more of the following groups, Black Americans, Hispanics, Portuguese, Asian Americans, Native Americans, Alaska Natives, and females of any race. So for us, onboarding registration requests the following information, company information, contact information, company biography information, including list of customers that are railroads, ownership information, proof of D DBE status and there um, it is a link there is a link that I could provide if anybody wants to follow up to our specific application on the website for DBE businesses um, and then also identification as a disadvantaged business enterprise so um, females black Americans Asian Pacific Americans subcontinent Asian Pacific Americans Hispanic native disabled disadvantaged veterans and hub zones um, we have started to make some changes since we started participating in this program, as well as the um, Commerce Commission's supplier uh, diversity reporting. So one of the things we wanted to do was encourage increased participation of DBEs across our network. So since then, we've actually, since the beginning, we've incorporated MBE criteria as a part of the request for proposal or RFP. Um, upfront. So proponents or potential suppliers are advised to be upfront of their MBE status and when they're being considered in supplier proposals. We are um, exploring technology to incorporate diversity categories at the initial stage of supplier onboarding. So our Ariba replacement platform is underway at CP. And with the new platform, our vendor has the ability to self-identify um, and categorize their MBE designation, 
We also have consulted with the rail marketplace. Our participation there resulted in a list of MBE railroad suppliers, in, including sort of the information for those suppliers that was given to our sourcing department. Um, and um, an update from, from the end of last year is that our uh, strategic procurement and supply department has formed a sustainability team which will be tasked with building the recommendations for our implementation plan to increase supplier diversity, as well as having the tools to fulfill the expectations of CP's new supplier code of conduct, um, and where CP is committed to working with and developing relationships with suppliers who share common values, such as uh, promoting employment equity, including diversity in our workforce, maintaining a workforce that is free of harassment, discrimination, and violence, respecting the fundamental human rights and communities in which they operate and respecting the cultures, customs, and values of the communities in which they operate, including respecting the rights of Indigenous peoples. And I have the opportunity personally to sit on our gender and LGBTQ plus diversity council within the company as well. So I'm involved in some of these processes and happy to sort of answer any questions that come. And I'm sorry, Bill, I don't know who I'm supposed to be tagging next, but thank you for the time today. No, that's, that's perfect. Next, we'll hear from Kelly Pate with CSX. Good afternoon. Um, yeah. Good afternoon. And Ariel, I'm glad you mentioned the benchmarking and the program that everyone is doing, um, all of the railroads together looking at, at supplier diversity and sharing some information. Because I think one of our biggest challenge for, challenges for all the railroads is seeing who's out there and who can participate. Um, like the other roads have mentioned, um, CSX is committed to promoting and fostering an inclusive procurement process, and we want to provide opportunities for all suppliers, regardless of size, social economic distinction, such as age, race, creed, color, sex, ancestry, or national origin. While we don't award <clears throat> suppliers based on preferences that would result in unfair competitive advantages, we are committed to actively seeking and engaging diverse suppliers to compete for opportunities to support CSX. One of the reasons why the partnership with Rail Marketplace and the other roads is so important is when you look at what in particular at CSX, the majority of our procurement spend is centralized and that is for rail specialized rail specific products and services. Some of those have substantial barriers to entry, such as track material, locomotives, freight cars, rail grinding services. In a lot of these areas, there's one, maybe two participants and have been the sole source or one or two sources for many, many years. We're hoping with the partnership with Rail Marketplace and the other roads that we can jointly start to build that opportunity for the rail specific products and services up within the diverse supplier category. Um, today, the areas of highest opportunity for DBE suppliers are at CSX and non-centralized procurement areas, local purchasing or areas where sourced through national contracts that utilize local subcontractors. We strongly encourage our national contractors to actively engage DBEs we even set goals for them. This is considered tier two spend, and it gives the opportunity for DBEs to grow their visibility and relationship with CSX. Next slide, please. Um, as the other roads have shown, we also have a place to register. The best path to becoming a CSX supplier is to let us know that you're out there and, and what you do. So if you go to csx.com, there's a form that will give you all the information or actually give us all the information we need. This will allow us to do a couple of things. It will allow us to include you in centralized bids, but it also allows us to share your information with the CSX employees throughout our 23 state network who manage local purchasing and the contractors who hire local subcontractors to work on CSX projects. So again, the best path to Getting on board with CSX is let us know you're out there. Go to our website. 
There's a section for becoming a supplier. There's a subsection for supplier diversity. And there's a link right in this presentation and on the website for you to let us know that you're out there. And with that, I'm happy to turn it over to John Wright of the Indiana Harbor Belt Railway. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay, Bill? Yes, we can. Yeah, your okay. comments are great, John. Thank you. Yep. So just wanted to let everyone know, first of all, we're a local company here in Indiana and Chicagoland, and we're proud of our place in the Chicago rail landscape. So just a quick synopsis of what we are. Uh, we're the largest switch carrier in the United States with 54 miles of mainline track, 24 miles of which is double main track, and 266 additional yard and, and siding tracks. So for a, uh, again, a small railroad, but being the largest switch carrier, there's a lot of opportunity for us to uh, obviously spend money in the local area with contractors. We interchange with the majority of the railroads in Chicago. In addition, uh, our railroad starts at up by O'Hare Airport and runs all the way to Gary, Indiana. We have a large hump yard over at Blue Island. We have a large, the largest auto switching facility over here at Gibson, and we also have in industry yards throughout the territory. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity here. We spend, uh, obviously, for a smaller railroad, a uh, significant amount of money locally for contracts and, and rail work and, and different capital projects. We're always looking for an opportunity to add to our, our base of contractors that bid on work. And so what we did is we, we put a contact on this show. So if you go to slide number two, uh, Dave Kelly's our main purchasing employee at the company, uh, but he is, uh, he's just one of many people that work on stuff like that. I would recommend that he be utilized as the primary contact. But if you go on to our website, you can also find other contacts for the IHB if there's some other area that, uh, again, uh, the contracting would be interested in, but I would recommend Dave Kelly as the primary contact. And all, everything is on the website under contacts, ihbrr.com. And if there's no questions, I'll turn it over to Corey Puckett on the at Norfolk Southern. Corey Plunkett. Yep. Thank you, John. Um, as John said, I'm Corey Plunkett with Norfolk Southern. I'm the director of purchasing here. Forgive me, my camera did not, there it goes. Um, thank you for having me. I wanna start, let's see, with a, a little background on Norfolk Southern. We operate just under 20,000 miles in 22 states, and that includes the Chicago area. I'm proud to say that diversity is a core value at Norfolk Southern. Our CEO uh, is a chief sponsor. He talks about the importance of diversity and inclusion at our general management meetings uh, at least twice a month. And we have a newly formed diversity and inclusion, inclusion council. The head of procurement is on the steering committee. That's my boss, Jackie Gray. Uh, and she's happy I have this opportunity here to try and grow our DBE supplier base. And, and that's ultimately why we're here. Uh, we wanna give you opportunities to win our business. I asked Bill Thompson, how could I best use this time to help our DBE supplier base? And uh, I, I heard him quoted at the beginning of the meeting, we want to take away the mystery of doing business with the railroads. And I know it's a big company, uh, the railroads, a lot of the railroads are, and it's hard to know where to start and who to contact. Next slide, please. And I'm glad uh, to hear the other roads sharing their information. Uh, the rail marketplace was mentioned. Uh, CP and CSX both mentioned that earlier in the presentation. We are all working together as a rail industry to grow our DBE supply base. And for Norfolk Southern, uh, the way to, to get started is to, to visit the links that I have here. I encourage you to go to the website, uh, click on the link, uh, visit our supplier diversity program page and read the brochure. 
You can direct general questions to our supplier diversity email box that I provided there. Um, general, a, a good use of that would be provide what you're interested in supplying the NS, either materials or services. And uh, the person that monitors that box will make sure that gets to the right buyer to include you and give you the opportunity. Uh, I specifically included the construction project manager's email address as I thought that that was most pertinent uh, to the people that may be on this call. Uh, feel free to email that buyer directly. Uh, Corey Bauer is the group manager that monitors that mailbox and will be sure to, to help you uh, become a vendor that uh, participates in our bids. And I provided my own personal information. Do not hesitate to reach out to me. Call me, text me, email me and I'll help break down the barriers and explain what it uh, takes to be a vendor at NS and help you have the opportunity. So I just wanna say thank you for the time here. I look forward to hearing from you and hope many of you reach out to me. Thank you. Bill, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Andrea Oswald with Union Pacific. Hi there, good afternoon. My name is Andrea Oswald and I'm the General Director of Procurement Operations and Supplier Diversity here at Union Pacific Railroad. For those of you who um, don't know about Union Pacific, we operate in uh, 23 states, primarily west of the Mississippi, with the exception of Illinois. We have about 32,000 miles that we operate. We uh, Supplier diversity is the fourth P in UP's four-pronged diversity and inclusion strategy. So people, practices, philanthropy, and procurement. In 2020, we're really excited uh, to say that we, we spent over $423 million with diverse suppliers. That's a 29% increase year over year. We're extremely proud of that. And we've got a big goal for 2021. In 2020, we spent some money with over 275 diverse suppliers in 35 states. So we're excited to, to get to know you and, and to see where you can be part of uh, what we've got going on here at Union Pacific. I wanted to highlight some of our major construction uh, capital projects that we have going on here in 2021. Um, the first one that I wanted to mention is in Illinois, just outside of Chicago, we call it the Crest to Peck third main line. That bid is tentatively coming out for late May. Um, so please you know, keep, keep, it, keep that on your radar. Over the last couple of years, uh, a lot of our capital dollars have been going towards uh, siding extensions or new sidings to support our train length extension strategy. A lot of those are in our southern region, so Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas. Uh, we've also been spending a lot of our capital dollars on intermodal facility expansions, um, including just outside of Chicago and Joliet, our Global 4 facility. So uh, some subcontracting opportunities that we have out there right now, uh, again, Global 4 is one, uh, Global 2 in North Lake, Illinois. Uh, we've got a parking expansion going on there. We're expanding our yards in Houston, um, LA. We're also got some intermodal facility expansions and just outside of LA, we're expanding our West Colton yard. Next slide. So similar to the other railroads, oh, sorry, next slide, slide please. Um, to become a supplier, um, apply directly on our website. If you go up to the suppliers tab, you'll see apply to become a supplier. Um, then please email supplierdiversity at up.com to notify us of your application. So that way my team and I can be, uh, can be on the lookout for it. Um, please include your capability statement with that so we can understand exactly what services you offer and where you might fit with UP. Um, I put on the slide here a couple of our standard supplier requirements. The insurance requirements are on there, um, so you're familiar with those. We also require the use of E-Verify for employees who work on, uh, who, who perform work for UP and E-Rail Safe certifications for each employee if the work is done on UP property. With that, I'll turn it over to Chrissy Bright of Metro Strategies. Great, thank you so much, Andrea. Um, so I just wanna, I think, highlight maybe a big thing we're seeing right now is just, you know, how crucial it is to visit a lot of the Villa Rose websites and kind of get more information there. Obviously, a lot of these slides are very, um, very information heavy. So we'll be posting them to the Create website after this event, as well as these recordings. Um, and so if you didn't write it all down now, that's okay. We'll definitely share the information with you later. Um, I also just wanted to highlight that 
I think what's great about this event specifically is I get to see how to work these railroads in ways that are beyond create. So for many these railroads, create just one small slice of what they do, but through this event, you can learn more about their broader network of opportunities. Um, so, and as well, you know, also tomorrow morning, we have our panel with our public partners. So you can also see opportunities that happen with the city, the state and the county. Um, so right now, before we get into questions, actually, I have a few discussion items I want to just kind of raise with our presenters. Um, you know, given that it's this virtual format, it's a little, it's a little messier. Um, but if I actually can have you um, stop sharing the screen, that'd be easier, actually. If not, that's okay. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just going to ask a few questions, direct them at some of our um, presenters, and then if others want to kind of chime in afterwards, by all means, you know, please do so. Um, and then just for those of us that are listening in today, if you do have questions, please enter them in the Q&A. And after our sort of um, roundtable right now, we'll get to those actual questions. So just, we will get to you, I promise. Um, so I think, you know, we learned a lot through those slides and I think a lot of it is a lot of information. And so I think, you know, what is maybe the first thing a company should do if they wanna work with a railroad? What is kind of that first step someone should take? So as I said, I'm just gonna call one of our presenters to answer, and then if other presenters wanna chime in, they're welcome to do so. So um, Ariel, if you wanna start working with doing CP, how do you, where do you begin? So the first thing you should do is go to our website, um, pages about suppliers, and please register as a supplier that wants to work with CP and indicate your DBE status in that application. That would be sort of the best first starting point for us. This is a question for, for any of the panelists. You know, I know oftentimes when it comes to working with the railroads, people feel um, sometimes a barrier or a struggle is getting the proper insurance requirements. Um, is there anyone that can speak to perhaps how to go out that process or any information regarding getting the proper insurance? Hey, Chrissy, this is Kelly from the CSX. Um, I think one of the things that, that, that is important to know is that the proper insurance requirements to work on the rail and work actually on the track can differ greatly from the insurance requirements that we would have to be say a supplier of technology or to be a consultant providing professional services or even to come into our facility to inspect fire extinguishers or janitorial work or something like that. So I think one of the misconceptions with working for the railroad are that the insurance requirements are the same across the board, um, but they're not. The requirements that we have for somebody who's working on or near the track are a lot um, more intense than, than what would be required to be a supplier at some of our facilities doing building work, putting on a roof, maybe patching some asphalt, away from the track or even in our corporate office. Perfect, that is really helpful to know. Thank you for sharing that. I'm also curious, um, what qualities do the railroads look to for new suppliers and new contractors? Are there certain things people are looking to see when folks submit their, um, their kind of statement of work in those online portals? Perhaps Peter, do you have anything to share on that regard? Again, I think the first step, uh, as Ariel said, go to the website. If folks have questions about, um, you know, as you're entering that information into the portal, one of our, our uh, supplier or managers or suppliers will reach out to you. So, um, you know, just the first step, just get started. Take that first step. If you've got any questions, do you guys use this kind of service? Do, how big do I have to be? Um, you know, and if maybe you're a smaller firm and we're doing a contract that's too large in scope, we'll certainly look to partner you with one of our primes. So that's another thing to keep in mind. You don't have to bite off the entire apple yourself. Um, we are looking to make some of those matches um, internally. So thank you. Anything else anyone wants to add regarding qualities to look for in new suppliers or contractors? You know, I think I'm going to take the opportunity right now to add this, Chrissy, thank it. And that is, and this applies to all the railroads, particularly if you're interested in doing work on the track or, or out in the outside, but also many of the uh, examples that were given here today. And that is 
the importance of safety. And the railroads absolutely insist that all of the people that work on or close or near the railroads, people that provide services to the railroads, people that deliver products and goods to the services, uh, do so safely. That means safe driving, wearing the proper safety equipment. That means just the way the way they the way they operate on a daily basis. And one of the things you, you ask, what qualities do you look for in a in a in a vendor? And I'll be real frank. And they look at your safety. They look at your safety record. They look at your safety performance. They look at your 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 safety concerns and attitudes. And you really have to understand the safety concept and the fact that the railroads absolutely expect no, there's no secondary uh, issue here with regard to safety. It's, it's job number one. And they consider safety a prime consideration in making a decision on who to bring on board to provide design, construction and other services. So let me just emphasize again, you, you need to understand safety and how important it is in, in a work environment. And there are many, many contractors and consultants that do and get it. There's frankly, there's some that don't, but you really need to understand that before you uh, dive into work with the, working with the railroad industry. I saw a few other panelists what they were gonna speak at the same time as well. Does anyone else wanna chime in? regarding things to look for. Thanks, Corey. So Chrissy, my, my advice uh, was going to be to provide some background, some uh, examples of projects that you've done. Uh, when you reach out, list, list what you're interested in and provide some examples of where uh, you've performed that type of work. And uh, as I was also gonna mention safety, but Bill covered that well. So thanks, Bill. I will say it's been fun for me getting used to working with the railroads and, you know, when we had in-person meetings more so, every meeting starts with the safety briefing, which is who knows CPR and, you know, where's the bathroom, we don't trip over the cords. So it's been really kind of inspiring to see how much safety really does tru truly matter throughout all, all those the railroad work. Thanks, Chrissy. Okay. Anything else folks want to chime in on regarding qualities and suppliers or contractors? Okay, um, I know that a few of our presenters did share information in their slides speaking to this. But are there any upcoming opportunities people wanna share about the railroad, opportunities that are outside of the CREATE program ideally? I know that um, UP mentioned they had some work coming out while they're in a model yards, especially in I think some of the suburban Chicago areas. So like a possible avenue for some work. Andrea, did you want to speak to that? I saw you unmute. Yeah, yeah, one, uh, I, I did highlight those. One other thing that we have coming up actually, and if there's any firms um, that do environmental response, that's a, a, a major bid area that we're gonna have going out soon. So, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we do have things like uh, train derailments and, and things like that where we require um, cleanup efforts. So if there's any firms out there that do that type of work and have hazardous material uh, work, don't please reach out and let us know. Great. Can I add something, please? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it. Thanks, John. Okay. So one of the things, I, I, coming from a smaller company, you know, larger companies obviously have different ways of managing suppliers than a smaller company that doesn't have the same resources. So I think for speaking for the IHB, one of the things we like is to build the the, the, the amount of contacts that people that do supply type stuff out here because we're, you know, contracts come up and for us, we don't have ready access to a group of people that do it. So making that contact, it may not bear fruit this year, but maybe next year. And if we have that information, then when we decide we want to, you know, contract a service or just cleaning services, for example, we know we can reach out to that person then or that company and, and ask for a quote. So uh, again, I'm sure the BRC is probably in the same type of situation. The larger companies have these massive, you know, the databases to do it, but smaller companies that that information beforehand is very helpful. 
That's exactly right, John. I, I would uh, echo all of that and just uh, reaffirm that the best way to reach out to us is just to send us an email with the best uh, description and introduction you can. And, uh, and then I will basically forward it over to our operating departments and let them know that there is uh, another contractor interested in uh, getting to, to work with us. Thanks. And I'll add to that. Um, don't worry if you're not a huge company and you can't bid a whole project uh, as prime. If there's a subset of the work that you're interested in, still reach out and uh, we can help put you in touch with prime contractors to, to bid as a sub. This is Jacqueline with Amtrak. While the presentation does provide you with how to access the opportunities via the portal, and a lot of times Amtrak does do um, projects by major status, which could be by station. As you'll see, some of that information um, does include Chicago Gateway, um, as we have the other major stations as well. But there is also, and we have already done a lot of work, I believe, with the Chicago Gateway. But then there's another project called the ASDP program, and this uh, um, making um, every station ADA accessible. That is a major and huge project. Um, so it's something to look for on the portal as well. And I cannot emphasize enough all of the other little projects um, that are so important and critical to day-to-day -day operations, whether it's in the station, on the railroads, um, in facil different facilities. There are uh, just many opportunities that are equally important. Perfect. Unless folks have things to add, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into our Q&A right now. So one of our first questions we received, which I think has probably been answered by now, but just in case is, do any of the class one of short line railroads use professional services like marketing? And then a similar question is, you know, is there any need for outreach, communication, signage, reaching local communities, things of that nature? Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually and turn that over to um, perhaps again Peter to answer that question. Uh, so, Chrissy, I think some of those opportunities might be more closely associated with the create work coming up. Um, we don't have an active role in those projects coming up, but we have we have on occasion used um, marketing consultants, communication consultants for specific projects. It doesn't happen very frequently uh, for, in, in, in my company, uh, just sort of on an annual basis though. Yeah. You know, and I'll also add to that question. I know that for um, oftentimes with some of our projects we have coming up, um, we will have some of that, as Peter says, self-consulted through the CREATE program directly. And I think that's why it's really crucial throughout this event and moving forward to really get to know some of the prime contractors and really share your story with them so that when they you know, are awarded a contract for construction work or for design work, they can then use firms that are local DBEs to do some of that communication public involvement work. That definitely is part of the CREATE program. Um, and this is also a great time for me to plug our um, procurement listserv for CREATE. So if you go to our CREATE website, which is createprogram.org, and you go to the bids page, the Doing Business with Create page, you can sign up for a procurement listserv. And that way you'll get a notification through email of all of our upcoming bid opportunities. And then you can get a sense of sort of what, um, what will be the upcoming co contracting opportunities. Everything that happens through Create is sent through that list. Um, and then generally speaking, all of our bid opportunities have pre-bid meetings where you know the partner railroad that's leading it will review the um, scope of work that's needed, some of the requirements. And those kind of meetings are also a great time to get to see who else is in the room, who else is interested in this project, which is a great time to get to have teams and get to see who else you can possibly work with for those kind of services. Chrissy, I might, I might add that if you, and of course, all these sessions are going to be posted and available. If you're interested in specific design or construction work that's specifically part of CREATE, that was discussed in this morning session, and you can certainly go back and listen to that and get a pretty good sense of the type and size and numbers of projects that are coming up over the next six to 12 months. If you're interested, this is primarily for, for construction or for design related services. So there's a, there's a lot of work going on as part of CREATE. 
The railroads also do a lot of that work separate from CREATE, outside of CREATE, construction and design. But if you're interested in the, in the CREATE projects, you can go to the morning session and look at that, replay that or part of it and look at the lists. Okay. So just to kind of answer and combine a few of the questions for the Q&A. Um, this presentation is addition to all presentations and all videos or all of the presentations from this um, week. We posted to the CREATE website and also to our YouTube page. We will also have the PDF version of the presentations available then. Um, and those PDFs, remember, have all of the information for the, each individual railroad's contacts for their diversity and supplier programs. Um, you know, the CREATE program does not have an official diversity, you know, in, uh, section. We are really a combination. We are a partnership of, of individual railroads. So you need to go through the individual railroads to get to know their appropriate contacts. Um, additionally, we will be sharing a list of all the companies that participated at Get On Board. You know, I mean, ideally, this is supposed to be a networking event, right? Learning about CREATE, but also networking. And so we think that sharing the list can be a helpful way to sort of make those connections happen. They'll definitely be happening. Um, one question is regarding if any of the agencies recognize federally certified small business enterprises. That is a great question. Um, questions related to DBEs, uh, WBEs, SBEs, all of that will be addressed tomorrow morning in the um, public agency panel. So come back for that one. We'll address that question then. Um, here's a question that I actually don't know what it means. I'll see if anyone else can knows more than I do. It says, do you support wrap-up programs for your projects? It's like it's a capital, maybe an acronym, W-R-A-P. Anyone familiar with that? So I'm not the only one that's stumped then. If you want to send in, if for any of these questions that you feel um, we didn't address or you, additional questions that come up later, feel free to send us an email to info at createprogram.org. And we'll get back to you on that. Perhaps Bill Thompson has something to add. Bill, Bill, do you have anything on that? No, I, I'm not familiar with the term, but I mean, there's a great opportunity for the person or persons that ask the question or the company to, you could right now uh, go, to the, go to the question section and plug in a little more detail about that. And maybe it'll help us figure out uh, an answer. But sorry, no, we're not, I'm not familiar with that, that term. All right, well, well, we have that person type more information into the chat regarding that question. Um, another one we have is, can the panels speak to the mentoring programs between larger companies working with DBE firms? Can you have some examples of how that might work? Bill, do you even probably a starting place to answer that? So the, the question is, how would a mentoring program work within with, with the railroad industries? Yep, between larger companies and those smaller DBE firms. All right, we'll, we'll have to ask, that's a great question for some of the people that are on the, on the call from the railroads, if they have mentoring programs and how they would, how, would, how that operates. If somebody could take a, a stab at that, please. Maybe Corey or Kelly have familiar with mentoring of, of well, I'll take a, a stab at it. It's not an answer, but a takeaway. Um, part of what Norfolk Southern was hoping to get out of uh, being a participant on this panel is to learn how can we better support our DBEs. And uh, we are actively working within our organization uh, to grow our DBE base. And uh, this is a, a great question for me to take back to the team and, and think through how we can uh, incorporate this idea. With that, Bill, I'll turn it back to you or, or hand it over to someone else at another railroad that might already have uh, something like this in place. We, um, Bill, we, we don't have anything specific that I'm aware of in its place other than, like I mentioned in my presentation, um, you know, we get approached a lot by suppliers who, both diverse suppliers and, and non-diverse suppliers who want to be the general contractor as opposed to a sub. And what we always encourage them to do is start off as a sub so they can grow their relationship with CSX, so they can make the contacts, so they can show us what they're able to do. So I don't know, while I don't know that we have a specific mentoring program 
I think that the general idea is if you start off as a subcontractor doing good work and build your relationship with CSX, ultimately it opens that door. Yeah, great, great answers there, uh, Corey and Kelly. And, and I think you, you, I'm sure people observe the, the theme through many of these presentations. You, you, you reached out and said, you know, go to the website, make, make, the, make the first connection with us through the website but don't hesitate to, to email us or to contact us. And the whole purpose of that is to basically help you as a future contractor or consultant or supplier to negotiate and navigate basically the processes to get, to get onboarded. So, so there's, while there may not be formal uh, mentoring of certain suppliers, there are people that are dedicated in the railroad sector to helping you get on board and become a supplier if you have a service and if you have qualifications that meet the rare requirements. And so if you're, if you're concerned about that and wanna do business with us with a certain railroad in particular, look at the website. You'll, you can also look at this information that we've presented today and contact them and, and, and have a conversation. Is that a, is that a fair way to, address this uh, Ariel and maybe uh, Peter. Yep. I also want to just go ahead then use the opportunity to plug in a, a kind of panel we have. Tuesday from two to three, we have a panel called Working on Create an Insider's Perspective. And that's going to be a panel that really is just talking with current Create um, DBEs working on Create projects. So that's a great time to kind of ask them sort of how did you get involved? What can you teach us? What are some of your lessons learned? So I definitely recommend coming to our Tuesday 2 p.m. session to get kind of a sense of things you can learn and then perhaps afterwards reach out to some of those firms for potential mentorship um, opportunities. So definitely would consider that opportunity. Um, I am gonna wrap up. I think we have about one more question and then I'll do some kind of final housekeeping. Um, so the, in terms of a list of potential upcoming projects, we presented that this morning at that panel. Um, and so as we've mentioned, we will be sharing these um, recordings and also the presentations to our um, CREATE uh, website. And so we will have them up by May 7th at the latest. Um, so when you go to the createprogram.org within the next, um, by May 7th, you will see all the recordings and all the presentations from today posted to that location. Um, additionally, if you have questions uh, you think of after this event or, you know, maybe in a couple of days after this session, feel free to send us an email to info at createprogram.org. And that's going to be the place um, to see, um, to kind of just ask us additional questions. Um, so I think that we have addressed all of the questions that I see. Um, yep, I think we have addressed them all. So I'm going to go ahead then. Unless the Bill Roads want to share anything else, I think we can go ahead and close this session. Oh, here we go. So if you do want to attend additional sessions throughout the week, thank you for that prompt. Um, it's the same link as you used for this one. So it's the same link moving forward for all future panels. Um, and just kind of to recap what's coming up for the, day, for the week ahead, um, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. is the public agency panel, and that's where we'll have actual experts from the um, procurement offices that can teach you about DBE certification and those sort of questions. Um, tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m., we have that panel with Working on Create, which is talking with the folks who already work on Create contracts. Um, Wednesday at 10 and 2 p.m., and then Thursday at 10 a.m., we have our business presentations, and that's where we're going to have five different DBE firms present their services and the opportunities they provide um, during those sessions. So some of the prime firms can learn who, who is out there doing work they may want to contract in the future. All righty. Well, I think that concludes this session. Uh, again, if anything happens over the next you know, couple of days, send us an email info at createprogram.org. And we look forward to seeing you at future sessions throughout this week. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.